doing well. So today's video is going to be a little bit different since I am not in it, but I received a DM from someone and they asked me to make a video about the report sheet that I use at work. So I decided that that was a great idea. So we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of giving and receiving a report. And then I'm going to do kind of like a mock bedside report so you guys can see how I give report and like the things that I would say. And also you guys will be able to see how I receive report and what I write and where I write it. Also, I'm thinking about doing maybe like a NICU series where I just talk about different things in the NICU. But, um, you know, I made that one video titled So You Want to Be a NICU Nurse and I covered so much. That video was pretty long, so I wish I would have broken that down into smaller videos and made that a part of the series. But um, I've been thinking about different ideas that I can do and a lot of people have been asking me to make more videos that are NICU specific. Um, I've kind of been struggling with some ideas, but I've come up with a few. And if there's anything specific that you guys want me to make a video about, just let me know. Just like the girl did for this video, because I am more than happy to do so. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. Alright guys, so today I just want to go over the report sheet that we use at work when we're getting bedside report. So this is basically what it looks like. And it's the same on both the front and the back. So I'm just going to go over pretty much every section so you can get an idea of what I would write and what each section means. So when you come in for work, you will usually go straight to your patient's chart and you will get a sticker. So the sticker goes right here and it has the patient's last name, their MRN, CSN, and date of birth. And then over here is just gestational age, so how many weeks they were when they were born. And then we have their current gestational age, day of life, birth weight, current weight, dosing weight. Password is something that not all patients use. It's mostly for like if a parent calls for an update, they will give a password first before you give them any information. An NP resident is just so you know if the baby's provider is a resident or a nurse practitioner. So then over here we have maternal history, which of course is important for newborns because whatever the mom went through is going to directly affect the baby. And then delivery history, so like APGARS, was it a vaginal delivery or a C-section? What happened in the delivery room? Social history could be things like, do parents need an interpreter? Is there a CPS case going on? Um, do they have other children at home? Just, of course, social things. And then thermal regulation, that would be where we talk about if they're under a radiant warmer, isolate, what the temperature is set to, or if they're in a crib and dressed in swaddle, we talk about their temperatures. Neuro, um, are they appropriate? Or do they have something going on? Um, infections would be if they're on antibiotics or if they had a workup recently, like blood cultures. We discussed that there. IVH would be like if they have a grade three, some type of brain bleed or something going on. Um, and we talk about like their head ultrasound. Um, so HAINT stands for head, ears, eyes, nose, and throat. Cardiac, do they have like a murmur or any heart issues that we need to know about? ROP is retinopathy of prematurity, so we talk about their eye exams. And then of course over here we have respiratory. So how are they breathing? Do, are they retracting? Are they tachypnic? Um, do they have any respiratory support and oxygen requirements? Um, then over here for suction, we talk about if they were deep suction, do they have like a lot of oral or nasal secretions? And so they have a trach or they're intubated. This is where you would write the information, the size, and what it is taped at. Um, here it would be like vent settings. So like if they're in bubble CPAP or if they're on a ventilator, you would write all of that information here. GIGU, that's where you would say if their diaper weights or check. So are we weighing their diapers or are we just documenting what's in it? And this is where you would put their urine output or if they have a Foley. This is where we discuss feeding tubes. Um, any issues with their skin or musculoskeletal system. AG stands for abdominal girth, so we talk about their belly measurements. Um, is their belly soft, round, distended? Um, we talk about if they have an ostomy or any issues with bowel movements. And this is where we talk about their feed. So what are we feeding them? Are they NPO, getting mom's breast milk, um, donor breast milk, formula, anything like that? And then a lot of patients on our unit are on total fluids. So they have a 
limit of the amount of fluids that they're supposed to have every day. So we would write that down here, and then we would simplify it by talking about how much they get per hour. IV tubing change, we change our tubing every um, four days, so we have to keep up with the date to make sure that we're preventing infection. VAD is vascular access device, so we would talk about do they have a PIC, um, IV, Broviac, or any kind of access, we put that here. And then we talk about what fluids are going through those lines right here and how much. So here, these numbers stand for the time. So we have regular time and military time. So 8 o'clock and 20 hundred. So this is where I like to write down like um, any meds. So if they have a med due here, I will write it here at 8 o'clock. If they have a med due at 12 o'clock, I would write it here. Also, this is where I like to write my reminders during my care time. So when I do my care times, obviously I have to do things like temperature, abdominal girth, um, maybe their urine output. So I will write those things down here sometimes just so I won't forget in case something happens to pop up before I am able to chart. This is just so I have a reminder because I will forget what the temperature was and what the girth was. So I like to write it down when I do the care times. So down here, we can write um, if their vital signs are like Q shift, which is more so for the babies that are going home soon. Uh, and we have NAS, so you would put their neonatal abstinence score there. Labs, so if I'm working night shift and I have a patient with labs due, I will write it down here just to remind myself. And then other would be things like um, just different reminders that you need to put down, like let's say they need a car seat test during your shift, so you would just like write down any other information down here. Okay, so let's jump right into the do's and don'ts of report. So first of all, what you want to do is make sure you are on time to work. No one wants to wait forever to give report. Like, make sure you are at work by 7 o'clock or whatever time you're supposed to be there so that the person waiting to give you report isn't waiting forever. Also, you want to make sure that you are ready to receive report. Like, once you start giving, getting report or giving report, you don't want to interrupt it by starting talking to your friends and laughing and just, you know, interrupting report numerous times. You want to stay focused on what you're doing. Also, one thing that I really don't like is when I'm giving report and the person receiving it literally repeats everything I say so slowly and they write every single word out so slowly. Like, guys, it is okay to use abbreviations. So like if I say the patient received PPV in the delivery room, you don't have to go patient received positive pressure ventilation in delivery room. No. <laughs> All you have to do is really, literally write PPV and DR and then boom, you got what you need to know. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started and so you guys can see how I give report and how I receive report and like what I write down. Alright guys, so for this fake example, I obviously have to make up a patient. I can't use real patient information due to patient confidentiality and HIPAA, uh, which is obvious. So I'm going to kind of just make up a patient in my head. So um, let's go ahead and get started and pretend like I am giving a report and also receiving a report. So like I said, when you first come in, you usually go to your patient's chart and you grab a sticker and you put it there. The sticker will have their last name, date of birth, CSN, and MS MRN. So let's pretend like we already have a sticker here and it has their last name on it. So we're going to say the last name is Doe. And please excuse my handwriting, it is not the best, but whatever. <laughs> Alright, so now that I have my sticker, I am ready to receive report. So now let's pretend like I am giving report. Alright, so this is baby Doe. First name is John. So we usually write the first name on the sticker. So John was born at 28 weeks and 3 days. He is now 33 and 1. This is day of life 33. So birth weight was 790 and current weight is 1206. As for maternal history, mom went into preterm labor and she also had pre-E. It was a C-section, and APGARs were 5, 6, and 9. So he was also intubated in surf times 1. As far as social history, parents only speak Spanish, so they'll need an interpreter. 
And this is their second baby. Thermo Rag, he is in the isolate on air control and it is set to 28.5. Temps have been fine throughout the day. Narrow wise, he is appropriate. Infection, he had a workup um, on the second for an increase in events, but that came back negative. IVH, his head ultrasound was normal. As far as heat, he does have some molding. Cardiac, his last echo showed that he has a PDA and he does have a murmur. So for my shift, he did have um, about three birdie desats and they were self-limiting. ROP, his last exam was last week, so he's due to have another one next week. He is zone two, stage zero. Respiratory-wise, he can be intermittently tachypneic. And he is on bubbles right now, plus five. And he's been at 21% throughout the shift. Uh, we did deep suction him at about 8 o'clock. And we got a moderate amount out. GIGU, he is diaper checks. And he does have a 6.5 French OG tube, and that's at 16. As far as skin, he does also have a reducible umbi hernia. And he has a history of being on phototherapy, but that was discontinued and resolved. Abdominal girths for me were 23.5 to 24. His belly is a little bit round, but it's soft. Um, and so he hadn't stool for the last two days, but for his last care time, he finally did stool a good bit. As far as feeds, he's getting maternal breast milk, 24 cow, fortified with HMF. And so he's getting 24 mLs over 30 minutes. And he's tolerating that just fine. No issues with that. As far as excess, he only has a left hand PIV. And it is saline locked. He is on the 8 o'clock schedule. And as far as meds, you do have multivites and iron at 8. And then you also have caffeine at four. So yeah, you do always want to ask at the end if you left out anything and if the person you were given report to has any questions. But that is basically a report. So that was like a really simple example for a baby that's like not really sick. So as you can see, I didn't do any total fluids or anything like that. But if they had total fluids, I would write how much they're supposed to have for the day and how many each hour. And let's say if they had like a pick or something like that, I would write pick and then I would write what they're getting. So I could write like TPN running at 3.5 and lipids running at 0 0.5 or something like that. So that is basically report. You just want to go over your orders after you get report. And of course, if you have any fluids, you would sign that off. And I also want to add that if the patient's parents are at the bedside, you do want to go over there and introduce yourself to them. Ask them if they have any questions or if there's anything that you can do for them. And it's very important that you keep up with this paper throughout your shift. Um, you don't want to lose this because obviously it has all your important information on it. And also throughout the day, if there's any changes or anything like that, you do want to write that down on your sheet so that you can hand that off during report when it's time for you to leave. Also, we do have um, 
little bins that we place these in after a shift to have these shredded because it does have um, private patient information on it and you don't want this to be lost or in the hands of the wrong person. But um, yeah, that's report in a nutshell. I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And I hope you all have a lovely day.